if you're new here, my name is Anna, and on this channel, I'm sharing our journey of learning how to turn our home into a homestead. Today is an awesome day because we are partaking in the Canuary collaboration put together by Lisa over at Sutton's Days, and I'm super excited to share this recipe with you today. So we are gonna be making a squash soup base. We're not gonna be making the actual squash soup. It's gonna be something that you can just like dump in a blender or dump in a pot and buzz it up and then uh, kind of add a couple of things to it later on to kind of bring it together to make the soup because we cannot actually can pureed squash. So I've seen some people do it. I'm just not comfortable doing it. I'm, I'm, I'm a slight rebel canner. I'm not that much of a rebel canner just yet. I understand uh, why you don't want to can purees. It makes scientific sense to me. So I, I, I kind of avoid that. Um, especially something that I like to be as thick as I like my soups to be, it can be a little dangerous. So I'm just not going to go there that route, but I do want to have say, some, boo, but I do want to have some squash soup in my pantry so that I can have it when I want to have it. So before we actually get started, I want to make sure to let you guys know about the collaboration that we've been putting on for the whole month of January. There are 15 different channels that are, that are 15 channels, I think it is. I didn't count. I think it's 15 because most people are doing two videos. But anyways, we're all putting out videos one day, every single day, this whole month. And so if you go back and watch all these channels, I'll link them all down below, and you can watch all of their videos, and you gotta make sure that you comment on each video because Lisa is gonna go through and she's gonna randomly pick a number, I think it is, one through 30, she's gonna pick a video. I think it's random, like she's not actually gonna be the one to like, I want that one. But she's gonna randomly, it's randomly pick video, and then within that video, a random comment generator, they're gonna pick that comment, and that one is gonna win the Presto Pressure Canner. Oh my gosh. So you totally need to make sure that you are commenting on every single video to give yourself the best chance of actually being able to win a pressure canner. Cause I don't know about you, but even if you own a pressure canner, a second one is divine. It is so great to have a second canner or a fourth. But, um, so real quick, let's go over these awesome channels that are actually partaking in this. And of course, Sutton's Days, uh, Prepper Potpourri, Linda's Pantry, Jen Goff, Tuli, Tu, Tuli Lu creates the purple, purposeful pantry, 1870s homestead, a good good life farm, our hodgepodge homestead, acre homestead, alderman farms, fermented homestead, freedom homestead, mouse toes, and Diane the canning nana. So amazing amount of creativity and knowledge with all of these different channels. So make sure that you check all of them out there, all of those channels out, all of those videos out. I will link their channels down below. So make sure you check out all of the channels. They're amazing channels. You would definitely are, it is definitely some channels that you want to have in your life. So check them out. But the way that we're making this base, I'm not going off of a recipe, but we are following safe candy guidelines. We are gonna make a but mostly butternut squash soup. I got this just in case we need a little bit of extra. And I do have some more on reserves as well if we need it. According to the National Center for Home Food Preservation, for a canning load of nine pints, we need about 10 pounds of squash, right? double check yes so it is a basically a, a, a oh my goodness a pint is a pound the world around apparently also applies to this these should be pretty much enough to make nine jars nine pint size jars you can make these into quart size jars very easily you're just going to increase the canning time on that and the canning time for squash is for pints, it's 55 minutes, and for quarts, it's 90 minutes. National Center for Home Food Preservation. So what we're gonna do with this is we have some chicken broth that I'm gonna have here. I'm gonna warm it up before we actually pour it over the squash. We are going to peel these. We're gonna seed them, de-seed them, and then we are going to chop these up into, you know, half inch to three quarter of an inch cubes. We're gonna par cook them in here for I know all these, I just wanna make sure I'm giving you the correct instructions. I don't wanna give you the wrong ones and then I have to do a little note on the side. So I have it all here. So we're gonna boil for two minutes in water. So we're gonna put, do these in batches just to make sure that it doesn't take too long to come up to temperature. 
This particular unit here is a little bit on the weak side. My stove would be a much better use of this, but I don't have a good deal for this. We're just gonna do smaller batches of par cooking, and then we're just gonna put them in, the, in here with a little bit of onion, and then top it off with some bone broth. For me personally, I like a very simple butternut squash soup. I think the butternut is the most amazing squash ever to make soup with. If you disagree with me, I'll fight you. I'm just kidding, but it's amazing. I just found when I was doing gaps, I did a lot of different types of squash soups and I just found that there's nothing beats a butternut squash soup. It is creamy, it's delicious, it has sweetness, but it's not too sweet. It has savoriness, but it's not like steak. Like it's just, oh my gosh, it's delicious. And I don't, I really enjoy it. You can add in, one thing that I do occasionally is I like to add in some types of I can't remember the exact term for it, but it's some like digestive herbs. Like I like to add in a little bit of sage maybe, but you don't want a can of sage. Some cardamom, some coriander, you know, just some delicious spices, but you're only gonna add a little bit and I don't always like it. So this is gonna be, a like I said, it's gonna be a squash soup base. So when we're actually ready to serve this, if I'm feeling something a little bit on the sweeter side, I can add like some cinnamon, maybe some, some garam masala to it and give it kind of like an Indian kick or we can add in like some digestive herbs, some oregano, some thyme, stuff like that. If I'm not feeling super great in my tummy, you know, there's all different types of routes that you can take with it. This is just a base so that all the hard work is out of the way and all you have to do is blend it up, add some spices and you're good to go. So even if you're not feeling well, this is something that you can totally do because all you really need to do with this is just buzz it up and heat it up. That's all you need to do. I mean, really you don't have to buzz it up, but I like a nice creamy soup. So. I'm gonna stop yammering and we're gonna start cutting these things up, okay? We are ready to get going. I got my trusty um, peeler. I got all my jars ready, they're clean. I have the canner warming up on the stove behind me to make sure that it's gonna be about the same temperature as the jars when we're all through. I got my broth warming up over here and I got my water going over here. So we're gonna go ahead and just peel and chop these things one at a time, get them in the canner so that we can load them directly into the jars. That's the plan at least. Let's move these here so you can see them a little better. So these butternut squash, two of these have been sitting out in my greenhouse for a little bit. I probably should have got them in sooner than I did, but we're gonna, we're gonna peel off and we're gonna take out all the bad parts completely and fully and then we'll use the rest of it. You can just do that with a spoon. are parboiled, we're gonna take them out and put them right into our jar. Leave a little bit of room for onions. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do the next batch on the stove over there. I think these got a little bit mushy, but we're not gonna pack these ones in just to make sure that it's not gonna be uh, difficult to process. The stove just has more power so it can recover from the cold of, of the, the squash going in there because it gets a little mushy if it takes a long time to warm back up because it's still in warm water even though it's not boiling. Okay, so I've got four jars out of one squash. So I'm going to put this, transfer this over to the stove and then we're going to run the next batch through. So if you guys have never heard of this peeler, it's called a Titan peeler. This is the best peeler that I've ever had in my life. I bought this probably six years ago uh, when I was doing raw vegan. And I got it along this along with, I think I packed it already, but it's um, it's the same, but it's a julienne. Uh, like, so you can make like matchstick carrots and things like that. Um, I'll link this down below because it's just, it's the best peeler you've ever had. It's, I've ever had in my life. I've gone through a lot of different peelers before I came across this one. And this one is just fantastic.
time so we can meet up with some food. Are you getting, are you recording this? She's, she's hooking me up. She's hooking me up, guys. Now we're on to the next step, which is the broth. So, we have our jar, right? All we're gonna do, some people use ladles. I really prefer to use the Pyrex. It's just so much easier. There we go. And stir it. Clean the bubbler. And you can totally add um, like ginger to this, garlic, anything you want. We're just going super basic so we can um, mix it up however we want later. That one's good. And the line you're looking for, see this line right here that goes, let me, this line right here, the one that goes all the way around, you're going for the bottom of that line. That's one inch. Go. Put the lid on here. And put the flat on. Tighten it fingertip tight and into the canner. Now that we got all of these canned up, well, jarred up, as you can see, they are quite beautiful. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna put these in the canner, okay? We're gonna put them in the canner that's kind of lukewarm. These jars are lukewarm because the squash, we cooked it, but it didn't get super hot. But the broth was hot that we just poured over it. So this is still nice. It's like a nice cup of hot coffee. And so we're gonna put this in the canner at about the same temperature. The water in there you want it to be about the same so you don't shock the jars. With our All-American here, it's a little different than the Presto. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the, the, uh, the rim here and we're gonna grease it down. We're gonna, well, you guys won't do it, right? So this is like kind of a generalized kind of how I, it's not a how to. You always wanna make sure you're following your canning directions and look up the National Center for Home Food Preservation as well as any bulb canning book and um, just follow the professionals. This is, I'm sure I'm gonna miss something. So, you know, this is not a professional how to video. This is just kind of a general how I do thing. So you take the petroleum jelly, Rub it along the rim here, right? We're looking through this little thing to make sure that we can see the sun shine through it. And then uh, that's about all you have to check on this one. <laughs> so we're gonna transfer these into the canner, put the lid on, secure it properly. So we're gonna crank the heat on the canner and we're gonna, once it comes up and starts steaming, it's gonna steam profusely out of this little uh, vent pipe here. And once it's steaming quite a lot, then we're gonna set the timer for 10 minutes. And the purpose of that is to get all, push all the air out and replace it with steam. And the only way to do that is to vent it for 10 minutes. Once that 10 minute vent is up, we're gonna put the weight on top, whatever the weight is for your particular elevation, look it up. And then um, once that weight starts to jiggle, we're gonna set our timer for 55 minutes. Double check, don't wanna give any bad. Yep, 55 minutes. So, and then once the 55 minutes is up, then we're gonna turn it off, walk away, and leave it until it cools off completely. All the pressure's gone, and we're just totally good to go. So, see you on the flip side. Okay, so now we got these out of the canner. You can see they're still kind of boiling a little bit. And so now we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna let these set overnight without uh, serving them. So, and then tomorrow, after 24 hours, we will um, take the rings off, wash them up, put them in the canner, and I will bring you back and I'll show you how to turn one of these jars into a delicious bowl of soup. The time has come and we are going to taste our butternut soup base. The first thing to do is to pop top here. Nice. Then we are gonna just transfer this right away into our blender, blend it up, and then heat it up on the stove. I'm gonna do that simply because it's just easier to do it that way. If you have a wand mixer, this is where it's gonna be handy. So we have our nice, delicious, thick soup base here. 
We are going to add a little bit of salt to this. I did taste it while it was trying to get it warm and it needs a little bit of salt, uh, just to make sure that it was warm rather. And then we're going to kind of go from there. Okay. And then also for the recipe, it calls to add in some cream. And since we don't can cream, we're going to add it here at the end. So good. Whoop, that was a little more than I intended, but it won't be cream. Okay, so we're just gonna stir it in here. You don't have to get it perfectly stirred in. Just kind of stir it. All right, let's try this. Oh, that doesn't need anything. Mmm. Wow. See, plain is the way to go. I'm telling you, if you have good quality ingredients. You don't need a whole lot to go in there because it's just good food and it's meant to taste good on its own. So me, for myself personally, I really like butternut squash soup, but I have made this type of soup with many different types of squash. They're not quite as good in my personal opinion, uh, but everybody likes a different kind of squash. And I'm sure there's better squash out there than butternut squash. I just don't have a lot of exposure to them. So you can adapt this recipe for whatever kind of squash that you have, and you can can it up like this and then just have it ready. All you need is a blender. You don't really even need a blender. You know, worse comes to worse, you could always just heat this up and just have it be kind of chunky. And it's not a big deal because it's super mushy. So it's basically just gonna turn to mush in your mouth anyways. Make sure that you guys go and check out all of the other channels in this Candy Ray collaboration. We are getting to the end here and it is not too late. You can always click on the uh, the Candy Ray playlist that I will link down below and that will take you to the playlist. You can watch all the videos, subscribe to all the channels, comment down below on all the Candy Ray videos to make sure that you're entered to win the Presto Pressure Canner. So make sure you do all of that stuff right after watching this video because you're gonna want to. It's a Presto Pressure Canner. Why would you not want to enter for that? And you can also watch all these amazing, amazing recipes that are coming out. They're so delicious. I can't even stand it. Like I just want to um, get my pressure, pressure canner out and just start pressure canning all of these different recipes that everybody has come up with because they're kind of amazing. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure right down about here, there's gonna be a little ball and you're gonna wanna click on that if you're new here because you're gonna wanna subscribe to the channel, right? Um, up here is going to be a video that uh, that uh, YouTube thinks that you're going to enjoy. And then right over here is going to be another amazing uh, canning recipe. This is going to be my chicken curry recipe that I made for canning ray. And then up here is going to be my canning playlist with all of the recipes that I've canned for the entire time that I've been doing YouTube. So make sure you check that out.